Somebody might ask that doesn't the Quran say that every musibah that happens to you is because of the sins that you have done? Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Every musibah that you do, every calamity that befalls you, every pain, every suffering, it is because of your own sins. And yet my entire khutbah, the first half of it has been, it's not a, it's not a calamity, it's a blessing in disguise. How do we reconcile this? The response, finish the ayah. Don't just quote half the ayah. Finish the ayah. What does Allah say in the Quran? وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ Through these trials, Allah forgives much of your sins. The purpose of trials and tribulations on the believer is to raise his ranks up. The purpose of trials and tribulations on the believer is to reward him in this world and the next. And therefore, even a calamity for the believer is not a full calamity, it is a blessing in disguise. It is to prevent a bigger calamity as we have seen in all of these three stories. Now, how do you know whether what's happening to you is actually just uh, uh, something to save you from a bigger calamity or in fact it is a genuine punishment? The response is very simple. Look at your own reaction to a calamity. Look at your own response to a trial and tribulation. Any time a trial afflicts you, any time you're in suffering and grief, any time some problem happens, and it causes you to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You increase your dua, you increase your dhikr, you give charity, you're always conscious of Allah, you're conscious of your own sins, you're conscious of all of this. Then wallahi brothers and sisters, whatever has happened to you is a blessing. Because anything that brings you closer to Allah, it is a blessing no matter what the cost is. No matter what the cost is, to come closer to Allah, you have won a fortune that is worth everything of this world. Everything of this world can be sacrificed, but not your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that brings you closer to Allah, then know that that calamity is a blessing, even if you don't realize it. You just don't know. You're looking five minutes ahead. You don't know the next hour. You don't know the next day. You don't know the next 20 years. Allah knows. If you have true faith in Allah, this calamity is a blessing. You just don't realize it. However, if this calamity causes you to distance yourself from Allah, you turn your back on the religion, arrogance comes to you and you say, oh, why is this happening to me? I gave $5,000 in the fundraiser last year. A'udhu Billah, do you listen to this? You think you're going to bribe Allah with $5,000? You think Allah needs you and your worship? If anybody feels that they don't deserve any type of musibah, then wallahi, that attitude shows that they deserve the worst musibah. The arrogance to put your judgments against Allah, I don't deserve this. Who are you to judge what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does? The very fact that you feel so arrogant, that you can comment on Allah's qadr, it shows that you really don't have iman. Because the essence of iman is to humble yourself in front of Allah. So the mu'min, who humbles himself in front of Allah. And he understands Allah knows and I don't know. And Allah knows why this is happening. I'll put my faith and trust in Allah. Oh Allah, you have a wisdom. Give me patience to overcome this. Give me ajr and reward to overcome this. Substitute something better. Alleviate my pain. Anytime something brings you closer to Allah, Alhamdulillah, this is good news. And it is news that you're on the right path. Everybody's going to be tested and tried. Even the prophets were tested and tried. Nobody has a rosy life. Everybody is tested and tried. So if those trials bring you your iman higher, that's good news. And if you find that your iman withers, if you find that your relationship with Allah is destroyed because of worldly calamities, then wallahi, this is time for you to pause and rethink things through. Time for you to make sure before death comes, you have a different relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, these three stories, they teach us that qadr is real. And this is what we believe. We believe in the six pillars of iman and the sixth of these pillars is what? And tu'mina bil qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi. You believe in qadr, the good and the bad. Qadr is real. And one of the benefits for us Muslims who believe in qadr, one of the greatest Tamaras, one of the greatest fruits of believing in Qadr is that when everything has been decreed and Allah knows what is going to happen, if you truly have faith in Allah, let yourself go. He'll take care of you. 
Let all of these musibas go. Allah will take care of you. Put your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what is happening is happening for the best. Have a positive attitude. Realize that the greatest blessing is the blessing of iman. Everything else is secondary. Wallahi, not even secondary. It's irrelevant. If you have Allah, you don't need anything else. And if you don't have Allah, then wallahi, all that you have is meaningless. The one who has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wins this world and the next. The one who does not, he has nothing to show. His purpose, his life is entirely purposeless to live. And what he will face will be much worse than this. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes us to be of those who when a calamity happens, when a musibah happens, our iman goes up. Our faith increases. Our dua is even more passionate. Our sajdas go higher. Our sadaqa and zakah is even more generous. This is the sign of a believer. And I seek refuge from those who when a calamity happens, their arrogance goes up and their religiosity goes down and their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shaken. Allah says, وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَهُ In Surah Al-Taghabun on the same issue, whenever calamity strikes you, it comes from Allah. It came by Allah's permission and whoever can have Iman in Allah at that time. You have Iman in Allah anyway, you believe in one God. But when you're, when you're in a difficulty, well, that's when you start questioning why is Allah doing this, right? That's the time when Allah puts the words, وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ Whoever can truly believe in Allah then. Yeah, you always say Allah is Ar-Rahman. But do you really feel Allah is Ar-Rahman right now? Nah, right now he's probably Dhuntiqam. Right now he's probably the one who takes revenge. Right now it's probably Jabbar, not Ar-Rahman right now. That's your Iman went away. Your Iman and Ar-Rahman went away when you were in difficulty. Allah says, if you can have Iman in Ar-Rahman at that time, the best of Allah's names, the best of what is Allah is to you, what He described Himself to you, at that moment, then what gift will Allah give you? And this is the conclusion to my khutbah. Like, what is it that Allah will give you? There's something that's bothering you, and it's eating away at you. And if you think if that problem went away, you would have peace. Every one of us has some problem that keeps us up at night. We're thinking about it and we're saying, man, if that went away, I'd be alright. Guess what? When that one goes away, there's going to be another one. And when that one goes away, there's going to be another one. And when the other one comes, you're like, the last one was easier. This, where did this come from? <laughs> this is way a bigger problem. What does Allah give you when you can trust Him? He doesn't end your problems. This life, problems will not go away. If problems were going to go away, they would have gone away for Yaqub a lot sooner than for you and me. If, the prob- if no problems would have come, because we have Iman, then Maryam عليها, should not have had problems. Rasulullah should not have had problems. You study the people that are closest to Allah, and all you're studying are problems. Really big ones. Their entire life. That's all you're studying. You're just learning about one problem to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. That's all you're learning. Yusuf alayhi salam, a great profound messenger of Allah and I mean from childhood there are problems. From childhood there are problems. So what, I keep asking that question. What is it that Allah has given you? What do you get when you completely put your trust in Allah in the middle, in the thick of a difficulty when everybody else is telling you Allah is, on the one hand people are telling you Allah is angry at you, that's why this is happening. Allah hates you, that's why this is happening. On the other hand you start thinking Allah is punishing me, that's why this is happening. At that moment when you can have the best impression of Allah and maintain your love and reliance and bond with Allah, that Allah is, has not let you go. He hasn't, what does He give you? Yahdi qalbahu. He guides this person's heart. He gives their heart guidance. I can guarantee you, when your problem goes away, if it's a money problem, if money comes in, if it's a health problem and health comes back, if it's a family problem, the family problem goes away. None of the good things in this life are worth anything compared to that one gift. That one gift is Yahdi Qalbahu. He'll guide his heart. Your heart will be at peace. No matter what is happening in life, there's still a smile on your face. And people are looking at you and saying, Why are you smiling? Why are you okay? Look at what's happened to you. Look at what's going on. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's cool. When you can develop that, there are people that will have all the money in the world and they still can't sleep. There are going to be people that have everything you ever imagined will bring happiness. They have it and they don't have peace. They don't have, they, 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 they are not happy with themselves. They drown themselves in drugs and alcohol to get, to escape reality. 
They can't face reality. And other people watch videos about how, how, how amazing their crib is and how sweet their ride is. And they're looking at that and saying, I want that. Ya layta lana mithla ma utiya Qarun. I, I wish we had what Qarun has. Man, that's, that's some boss life he's living. And yet on the other hand, all, all, all Allah will give you, if you can turn to Him, He'll give you the one thing that no amount of money, no amount of popularity, no amount of people not arguing, or people liking you, people appreciating you, none of that will give you what this one gift that can only be given by Allah, Yahdi Qalbahu. Allah will guide His heart. Allah will guide this person's heart. This is the ultimate gift of Iman. This is the ultimate gift of Musibah. So now, let's finally, let me conclude. I started this khutbah talking about difficult situations. People are stuck. You're stuck, I'm stuck. In some situation, we, we don't see a way out. Those difficult situations are actually Allah's way of giving us the most valuable gift we could ever earn. His way of guiding our hearts. If we can just use those situations to find Allah in those situations, to talk to Allah in those situations, and you don't have to know Arabic to do that. You don't have to know a lot of Quran to do that. You just turn to Allah and you say, Ya Allah, you are the best of planners. Ya Allah, nobody loves me like you do. Nobody cares for me like you do. I know this situation is best for me, guide me. I need your guidance. There's no way that you will turn to Allah genuinely asking Him for guidance and He will turn you away. You will ask Allah for a car, He may not give you. You can ask Allah for a house, He might not give you. You might ask Allah to cure your disease, He might not. Maybe He will, maybe He won't, because He knows what's better for you. But one thing guaranteed He will give you when you ask Him sincerely is His guidance. That He will give you. And when He gives you that, everything else is solved. Everything else is taken care of. May Allah Azza wa make us people who truly, genuinely beg for His guidance. And may Allah make all of our difficulties, all of the challenges we have in our life, a means by which we draw closer and closer to Him and earn His priceless guidance.